Hello everyone, this is Dan Beersdorf. Uh, I'm an eminent domain lawyer and this video represents the second in our series entitled Be Vigilant About Eminent Domain, Big Brother May Not Be Your Friend. The first uh, video that we did basically gave uh, our viewers a broad overview of the eminent domain process from beginning to end. This one is basically going to focus on what we call the right to take. Uh, we start out uh, that uh, investigation, if you will, by considering the uh, entities that have the right to exercise the power of eminent domain. The entities that have the uh, power of eminent domain clearly are the government, all the way from the federal government down to state governments, state agencies, school districts, counties, towns, municipalities, library boards, park boards, any governmental authority will have the right to uh, exercise the power of eminent domain. Additionally, there are some technically non-governmental entities, some people call them quasi-governmental because they're heavily regulated, that also have the power of eminent domain. Uh, those basically include, uh, for instance, utility companies like uh, power companies with power lines, energy companies with uh, pipelines, and our railroads. In order to take private property from an individual owner, the government has to basically satisfy two requirements. First, the property must be used for a public use. The idea of a public use, you might say, well, what is a public use? Easy ones are, for instance, a road. That's a public use. A school is a public use. A park is a public use. Um, a jail, a government building, anything that uh, you can imagine that would be used by the government uh, for the benefit of people generally in society is going to probably fall under the category of public use. Second, the property owner must be paid just compensation. You might say, what is just compensation? Well, just compensation basically, as, 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 it, as it has come to be developed in the area of eminent domain law, is basically the, the fair market value for the property that is taken. The, the issue of, uh, as I indicated earlier, there's, there's two requirements. Besides the just compensation, paying the money, you have the public use, but there's also a necessity requirement. And uh, I won't go into this in a great deal. I think some of it is, is fairly obvious, and I'll maybe just use an example. If the government is planning on putting a new road through a, a property that has no road today, and the road is going through a 40-acre parcel, and they maybe need to have a strip that's, let's say, uh, 150 feet wide along one edge of that 40-acre 40 feet, uh, 40 feet, uh, 40 parcel, it would be improper under the Constitution for the contending authority to take the entire 40 acres. They don't need the entire 40 acres. They only need the 150 feet on the one side of it. And so, in most cases, the issue of necessity does not arise, but it's at least important to understand because in certain circumstances, uh, the, uh, the government has probably reached too far in terms of what they are seeking to acquire. And as a result, uh, it may be a reason why the taking would not be uh, authorized and uh, would be overturned or over, uh, overruled by the, by the court system. Many people have, have asked whether or not it's possible to stop a project and therefore stop a taking because the project just doesn't make any sense. As an example, I have a property owner that will come and say, you know, they want to take 150 feet off the edge of my property for this new road. And my house is there. I've got uh, two buildings, two outbuildings there. And yet, right across the street, there's nothing there. Right across the exit, they're building a new road. Right across this old where they, where they could put this new road, there's nothing there. It's an open field. So why do they take mine and not take the other one? The other one would be less expensive. They wouldn't have to pay me as much money. Uh, and and uh, it, it seems like that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, this issue has been raised many times before many courts. 
And basically, the courts have uniformly said this. If the taking meets the public use, for instance, a road, it is not the province of the court to determine whether the placement of the road is the wisest decision, or whether it's the smartest decision, or whether it's the most cost-effective decision. That decision is strictly for the legislative authority that is authorized to do the taking in the first place. If the public use is met, the taking will be authorized, and the other issues of efficiency, cost-effectiveness, uh, smart, uh, uh, smart plan, whatever, all those issues the court have, courts have said are left for the political arena. So I, I make a point of that because a lot of people feel that that should be a basis for being able to stop a right to take. And I just want to clearly point out it is not. And so to try and focus on that and try and create a, a, a factual basis along those lines is basically uh, an entirely a futile effort. 